Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young. I'm just going to walk you through manufacturing trends for Canada for 2015 November. Now, my agenda will be I'll highlight the issues, I'll talk about the key sectors, I'll go in a little bit about the details of the trends, and I'll do a provincial summary. Let's talk about key issues at a high level. Now, the Canadian dollar is at the lowest level since 2003, so that's 13 years ago, so we're under 70 cents a dollar, so that makes imports much cheaper, but it also benefits exports, so that's something to bear in mind. The price of oil, it's the lowest level it's been since 2003, or almost 13 years. The Bank of Canada is hold the line on interest rates with no indication that they're actually going to bump up rates, which impacts consumer borrowing, which impacts the overall debt issues. We're actually going to see lower, slower economic growth for 2016 and 2017. So this is more of a projection out to what you may expect, which will impact both the export side of manufacturing as well as inside the economies in terms of consumer spending, which I'll get into a little later. I brought in government policies because right now you've got a lot of government policies in play that will drive the impact of manufacturing costs as well as consumer spending. So I'm talking about carbon tax and talking about payroll taxes like an ORPP. I'm talking about corporate tax increases that happened in Alberta. I'm talking about the overall government's philosophy in terms of policies, in terms of what they may do going forward as part of that impacts manufacturing. I've got infrastructure highlighted there because there's no clear consistent strategy what that infrastructure spending will entail, so that needs to be factored in. I brought up retail sales because retail sales growth is basically growing at 1.9% or 2%, barely above the cost of inflation. It's growing, but growing slowly. And most of that's been driven by big ticket items. So let's talk about the overall trends. The biggest hit that we've seen this year, and it's not unknown, has been the impact of the oil industry. So we've lost about $2 billion worth of manufacturing sales in the oil sector. However, we've been able to pick that up in key sectors. Transportation, driven by automotive, in aerospace, Food manufacturing, that's actually producing everything from cereals, uh, consumer spending area, consumer products, that's where that's coming into play. Forestry's come back, and that's driven by housing starts are at an all-time level that, that haven't been seen in about a, almost a decade in, in the U.S. That's driving it. So you're seeing big key areas there, but the problem is, is those sectors in themselves have lost capacity issues. and therefore haven't been able to offset the total burden of the oil impact. This will just show you a bit of the trend lines to show you what's happening. We're up over basically October marginally about less than a half a percent so that's something to bear in mind and you can see the key sectors here with the biggest one driving it down in terms of the overall is the oil sector but you can see a sector by sector look in terms of what's happening here in this particular driving. Mostly it's the transportation side that we're seeing where we're seeing most of the improvement. Now, in summary, the provinces. So in Ontario's case, which is mass, they'll keep telling you the fundamentals are strong there, but really it's being driven by automotive and a little bit lesser degree aerospace. So you're really seeing that a little bit there, maybe some food processing. So you're not really seeing a big uptick in manufacturing other than a couple key sectors. Aerospace, aerospace seems to be going through a, a, a cycle now where you're seeing an uptick. That uptick is actually going to impact Ontario, Quebec, and BC, where predominantly most of the investment is. Forestry sector is going to see some good uptick as well, because the housing starts are very strong in the U.S. as well as Canada. But there are some factors you need to come into play with the housing starts in the U.S., especially with the softwood lumber. It's up to negotiation in 2016, and that will impact what happens at the lumber and sawmills in terms of the lumber exports. We also have new trade deals that are coming into play from TPP. FIPA that will also impact exports in areas like food processing, aerospace, machinery, equipment that can also drive manufacturing sales. So those things need to be bear in mind as we move forward. If you look at the provinces and you look at where we are, Ontario's done well, BC's done well, but if you look at the other areas like Alberta, Saskatchewan, Newfoundland where they have a pri primary commodity based economies, you're seeing them struggle. But you're seeing some upticks in areas like Nova Scotia a bit that's almost holding its own. And you're also seeing some issues in Prince Edward Island where there's some uptick to, that you'll probably see in Nova Scotia as the shipbuilding contracts kick in for both BC and Nova Scotia on the new frigate contracts or coast guarding. You may see an uptick in the shipbuilding area as we move forward. And you also may see an uptick in the food processing area as well to offset some of the burden there. 
So the key aspect is, is we're far from clear what's going to happen to the economy, but what you should bear in mind that the manufacturing sector is going to have some good uptick in some of the sectors and downturn in others over the next year or so, and it's something you need to bear in mind as you're planning out your business cycles to bear in mind. Thank you.